Today, we're at Hendon. Today we're at Hendon, and I know I do a lot of content in and around Hendon, but I've never done a driving instructor drive-through at Hendon. And I'm gonna highlight some of the things that you will have to face if you're doing your driving test. I'm not, spoiler alert, going to be doing the Apex Corner because I've done a lot of content on the Apex Corner. I might add that in to a Mill Hill test route, although the Apex Corner is a big factor when it comes to the Hendon driving test center. Do let me know in the comments though if you'd like to see a Hendon route with the Apex Corner on it. I'm happy to help out if I can. But what I am going to do is take you on a route that will give you a few other complex kind of situations that you may have to deal with if you're taking a test at Hendon. If you are watching this video and you would like me to come to a test center near you then hit me up in the comments if there is a test center near you that you'd like us to come and have a look at and let us know. Like, comment and subscribe all that jazz. I'm also going to be doing a POV shot throughout this test, so you're going to get an idea of what it is that I'm physically seeing when I'm driving. Now, I'm not quite parked up in the correct position, so I'm about to drive past it and you'll see it on the right-hand side. The bays are on a slight incline. If you're not used to parking on an incline, I would practice it if you're doing your, your bay park at Hendon. Not that they like you practicing here, but certainly try and practice parking on a slight incline. And also the first junction is quite tricky. So the examiner say drive on when you're ready. So I'm gonna do a good check around my car. I'm sort of parked in between two bays. I don't really think I need to do too much here, although I am concerned if vehicles come from there, so I'm gonna move the car very, very slowly forwards. Doing good observation. I have to drive a little bit further forwards so I don't hit the parked cars here, and then turn. And now you can see the cars that are parked up ready for test. These three cars here are gonna be going out and test. Now, at the end of this road here, I'm gonna turn right. So check my center mirror, my right mirror, and your signal right. As I approach this, make sure my signal stays on. There are bushes here on the left. There's a curb here, which I need to be careful of. And I need to make sure I don't mess up this first junction. So I'm looking right, looking left. Now you can see my visibility is terrible. So do not rush this first junction at Hendon. Cars do come out. And also pay attention to that garage opposite. I now enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. Now there are no speed limit signs to indicate what the speed is. Now, if you go down this road, you will see signs that say 10 miles an hour, but there's nothing here to indicate what the speed limit is. So I would assume this is 30, unless I see otherwise. At the end of this road here, I'm gonna turn left, so I check my center mirror, my left mirror, gonna signal left. So I approach the junction, I've got people here, no pedestrians, looking right, looking left, looking right, looking left. I don't wanna mess up my first junction. And then I enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. Nothing coming up behind me. Speed limit here is 30, so I'm gonna try and pick up my speed. Now, at the traffic lights, I'm gonna be following the road ahead. So, as I come underneath this bridge, I can see there, are, there is a lane here on my right-hand side. I don't need that, because I'm gonna be following the road ahead. My speed at the moment is about 28 miles an hour, but the light is red up ahead, so there's no point rushing towards it. So I'm gonna check my mirrors, I'm gonna come off the gas, and make sure no one pulls out of this junction here on my left and then pull up behind this vehicle here. Try and keep a good distance between, between me and the vehicle in front. I can secure the vehicle. I'm gonna stick it in neutral just simply because I don't like keeping my clutch down. Now this particular junction can be quite tight. Sometimes people on the right-hand side make mistakes here. There's no clear defined lane markings as you emerge beyond this junction. So sometimes if you're turning right from that lane, be careful you don't drift across too far to the left. And being in this lane, following the road ahead, I wanna make sure that nobody does that to me as I'm moving up the road. Okay, so the lights are turning. So I check all three mirrors. Got a guy on a bicycle on the wrong side of the road here. It's a bit of a silly thing to do. And you can see here with this white car, how it kind of pushed across. And that guy's kind of made a mistake and gone ahead, although he hasn't interfered with me. Now I'm gonna pull up on the left, because quite often they get you to do that here. Now this is not the steepest part of the hill. So if you can pull up here, if they say you find somewhere to pull up on the left. But if you look a little bit further up the road, there are a few spaces up there, but not many. Now this is the hill starts. They kind of want to see you do a hill start and this would be a typical spot for them to get you to pull up on the left on a hill. The examiner says drive on when you're ready. So do all my observations around the car, making sure it's nice and safe. We're going to signal there is a bus coming up behind, but I deem I can get out before that bus comes. I've then got this pedestrian crossing or that 
guy on the blue, blue t-shirt on the right hand side he is going to cross the road so i don't want to rush that i'm going to check all three mirrors i can see the bus is now right up behind me or coach and drive on up the hill check my mirrors to go around this car here keeping a good distance from these parked cars. Speed at the moment I'm doing is about 20, 21 miles an hour. This is a 30, I've now stuck it in gear three. Car is not laboring too much. It was probably just about borderline the right time to change gear. And then I've got a school sign warning me potentially of school. So it is 1.48, so I don't think anyone's gonna be coming out of school at this time of day. On this bend, I can see cars do come around quite fast. So I'm gonna check my mirrors to the left, center left, make sure I'm positioned to the left. I'm gonna drop down into gear two so I get a little bit more power and I come around this junction. But quite often when you come up to this junction here, you're turning left. But on this test, I'm gonna be turning right. So I check my center mirror, my right mirror, I'm gonna indicate right. And I move into position close to sort of the center line, looking right, looking left, looking right. Now it's clear on my right, but it's not clear on my left. There is a vehicle coming around from the right hand side. So I'm gonna kind of wait. They are signaling to say they are turning. Their speed is reducing. So I'm gonna emerge. So I waited for that confirmation. They are actually taking that turn. I did have a little bit more confidence they were gonna take that turn because they are a learner driver and the instructor is in the car. I feel like I need to add a caveat to this because firstly, I am an experienced driver and I will take gaps that maybe a learner driver shouldn't. Simply put, that means you wouldn't be expected to take tight gaps. Secondly, you must make sure that the vehicle has confirmed its intention to turn before emerging. But not only that, assess the speed and the distance of the vehicle behind. I had judged this properly and that's why it went in my favor. When approaching junctions like this, just be careful. Now the speed limit along here is 20 and that's simply because there's university here. So lots of people milling about to so make sure that you don't break the speed limit along this section of road. I've got this woman here at the sanctuary island or the refuge island and now the lights turn. I've got the cyclist behind and he's kind of on his phone so I'm going to pay attention to that. He's not really paying attention to what he's doing too much, so I need to make sure I don't do anything too silly. And I come to a stop here. Now I am slightly blocking this entrance into a car park, but no one is turning in or out, so I get away with that. Check my center mirror, my right mirror as I position to go around the bus. I'm now positioned and committed. I'm gonna do it. And I've got a sign warning of speed. Now it's not warning me because I'm doing 19 miles an hour. I'm gonna take this net road on the left. So center mirror, left mirror, indicate left. I've got pedestrians crossing the road. There is a pedestrian priority issue. I make sure that I don't interfere with them. And because of the speed I was approaching, that was totally fine for me to let them cross. Remember when it comes to pedestrian priority, it's a should, not a must. If they are waiting to cross, if they're in the road, it is a must, so I must let them go although even in that there is a bit of gray area. There's a car on the right hand side. Again, the examiner could possibly pull me up somewhere along here and you might do your angled start. I'm gonna take this next road on the right. So check my center mirror, my right mirror, indicate right. And this particular route is leading me more into the sort of town center rather than away into the sort of country lanes. Now there's a car coming. I deem I possibly could have turned but because of that learner car that turned, it was just a little bit too tight, so it's just not worth it. In which case, I'm gonna take my time. I'm getting, invoking a lot of interest from people. See cameras all over the car. Enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. Again, school, max speed 20 when the lights show. They're not showing, so I can pick up my speed a little bit more. There is a pedestrian in the road, so again, my speed at the moment is about 21 miles an hour and it's simply because I've got the vehicles ahead, can't see around the bend, there's no point rushing just because the speed limit here is 30. I don't need to do that. It's a guideline, not a target. Now, at the end of this road here, I'm gonna turn right, so check my center mirror, my right mirror, indicate right. I'm gonna position on my side of the road. This guy hasn't quite done that. I'm getting closer to parked cars, but because I'm barely moving, I think that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna come up to the junction. Again, making sure I'm on my side of the road. I've got another pedestrian here. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna let them go. It's a should, not a must, but there's no problem for me to do that there. Looking right, looking left, it's clear. 
enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. And then at the traffic light, I'm gonna turn left. So again, I jump my sensor mirror, my left mirror, the signal left. And I'm gonna move into position here behind this BMW. This particular route is way more town driving. It's gonna feel much more urban than some of the other routes that you could do at Hendon. Hendon is a real mixed bag. You could end up doing sort of country lanes or you could be much more built up. However, Hendon tends to be a lot more built up than say Mill Hill is. Although there are plenty of built up areas on a Mill Hill test route as well. So I'm checking all three mirrors and I drive on. I'm anticipating these lights can turn or they shouldn't. They've just turned green. And I'm gonna move into the left-hand lane here behind this Renault Captor. Again, keeping a good tires on tarmac distance from that vehicle in front, just about. I'm gonna check all three mirrors. I put my handbrake on again. I'm not sure why I put my handbrake on so much. I don't normally do that. And then now that I've got a good safe distance between me and the vehicle in front, I've got more than two seconds, I will pick up my speed. Now, if you're on sat nav on this route, it's going to be telling me that I'm gonna be turning left soon. I'm coming down the dual carriageway. Speed limit here is 40. I'm doing 32 at the moment. And that's partly because I don't want to close the gap too much on that white car up ahead. I've got a good, safe gap, a nice distance from them. So there's no need to push it. Now, sometimes on this section of road, there can be a bit of traffic. But today, there isn't. So the sat-nav will be telling me to take the second road on the left. First was here. Second is there. So again, check my center mirror, my left mirror. I'm already in lane, actually. I don't need to worry too much about my signal. And I'm gonna approach in the left-hand lane. And I'm coming down to a roundabout. Now, it probably would tell me at the roundabout, turn left. So I'm gonna check my center mirror, my left mirror. I'm gonna signal left. I'm approaching the roundabout. I'm gonna come down to gear two, try and see if I can keep the car moving. Looking right, I'm not sure if I can. So I come to gear one, this car's blocking my view but also is acting as a shield. And this is a tricky little junction all by itself, especially if it's busy. So this is a slip road and it's a 40 Entering mile an hour. Average speed check zone. Thanks very much. Okay, so I'm leaning forwards. I can see a vehicle. He's now changed position for me. I've come back to gear one. I'm again checking my shoulder and then I'm picking up my speed. Now that particular slip road can catch people out because it's so short and your view is terrible. So if you are coming this way and you do that on your test, just be careful. I'm now back on the dual carriageway and you'll notice that I'm passing these vehicles in the middle lane. And that's partly because I'm coming up to a red light, which means the traffic is slowing down. My lane was effectively moving faster than theirs. So that's totally fine and then I'm up behind this van, a good safe distance, a nice gap between me and that van. On your driving test, you could possibly be doing an emergency stop. One in three tests do an emergency stop and you will definitely be doing a reversing maneuver. I'm not gonna be doing one today. At the traffic lights, turn left. So I set my center mirror, my left mirror, I'm gonna indicate left and I'm gonna come off here. This takes me back now, sort of round, back up into Hendon. And I've got a man sweeping the streets. So I'll make sure I give him plenty of room. Need to leave a pedestrian about a metre to a metre and a half of space. And then I'm going to be following the road ahead at this set of traffic lights. And again, it's very urban. I've got parked vehicles on the left hand side, I've got vans, I've got this van here now who's squeezing me in so I move slightly to the left and now I move back out again. Again the speed I'm doing is about 20 miles an hour, 22, checking my mirrors as I change position to come round these parked vehicles and again I've got good distance from these parked vehicles so I can pick up my speed. At the roundabout I'm going to be following the road ahead, it's actually the third exit, could potentially say it's a right I don't really feel like there's a signal required here. There's also nobody there. And then checking my mirrors as I exit. There is a pedestrian here almost waiting to cross on that roundabout, but I don't feel that that's safe for me to stop, so I will not stop for that, especially as I had that vehicle come in behind me. And again, we're back into a high street. So again, this real mix of urban, I say mix, it's a real urban route. I want to be careful here. I've got this big truck. I've got a pedestrian on the pavement. Oh, I've got this pedestrian just behind this van. 
he looks like he's going to get in his van and he looks like he's going to drive on. So because of that, I know the bus is encouraging me to come, but I think this guy's going to go. So I'm just going to let him come through. There's no point me trying to push through. I could have done, but I just didn't want to do that, especially with the van driver. So that's where another driver is sort of requesting you to do something and you can feel kind of pressured that you should have done it. But I just looked at that whole situation and that just did not feel right for me to just push through, especially with that guy just getting in the van. I can tell he's about to move off. He's not in a very good position. This bus is probably going to squeeze into me a little bit. So again, I reduce my speed and come back round got this woman in a green dress she's now seen me she's waiting then I'm gonna come up to this traffic light and at the traffic light I'm gonna turn right so I check my center mirror my right mirror I'm gonna indicate right my position obviously in the right hand lane and this is a crossroads a reasonably busy one light has just turned so I'm probably gonna be here just for a little bit I'm gonna put this out there We've got this huge backlog and the test is like 38 to 42 minutes. Would it not be a good idea to shorten the test down to about half an hour, 25 minutes to half an hour, so that we can expedite more tests? I do appreciate that that means you're gonna be driving less as a candidate, but if you can't drive, you should be able to find that out in about 25 to 30 minutes. You can normally find out within the first three. Bus is at eight bus stop I'm gonna wait for the bus to move off and check in all my mirrors I can see that the white car is coming in behind and then up ahead of me the road is bending around to the left I can anticipate that this bus is going to want to stop soon I can see the white car coming up behind me sort of closing in behind bus is moving around these parked cars make sure not interfering with anyone I also don't want to be too close to that bus because the bus is kind of blocking my view the further back I am the more I can see again I'm as positioned as well as I can from these parked cars and I'm just going to nudge out ever so slightly encourage that person to give me a bit more space and then the traffic lights I'm going to turn left and you'll notice at this traffic light the speed limit is 50 so I'm now entering a 50 mile an hour speed limit. And again, it's quite busy. Again, I'm gonna secure the vehicle, I'm gonna stick it in neutral. And again, I'm doing that because I'm just saving my clutch. I'm just looking after my clutch. If my clutch is all the way up, I just tend to save that clutch a little bit more. You don't necessarily need to do that. I probably, if I was you, I'd stay in gear one and be ready to move. With having a lot of experience as a driver, I get to I guess I can respond a lot more quickly if the lights turn. However, if you're confident and comfortable to be able to stick it in neutral, then do it. Lights turn, check all my mirrors, I'm gonna drive on. Now entering the dual carriageway and it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit. So what I'm gonna do is pick up my speed. The car's now doing 40 miles an hour. Can't see around the bend. So I'm just going to come off the gas for a second because I don't know what's around the bend, just in case. And now there's traffic. So again, I'm checking my mirrors. And just reducing my speed. Now, the reason why I'm not changing lanes here to go for an overtake, I'm not quite sure why that truck didn't move. It is possible that I could have changed lanes or moved into a better position there. I've chosen to stay here because actually at the traffic lights, I'm going to turn left. But there is a vehicle that is struggling slightly. I'm just wondering whether they may be on the verge of breaking down. No, I think that car has got itself into major difficulties. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to change lanes. I'm going to turn left here, so mirror, mirror and signal. Come around the bend, enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. Now, a couple of tricky things on this route. One, obviously that slip road. Two, I'm driving in quite a built up area. Mixed match of dual carriageways. I'm gonna turn right here, so check my center mirror, my right mirror. I'm gonna indicate right, I'm gonna position just left of center, looking at that vehicle. I feel like I can turn before that vehicle comes. Enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. It's possible 
you could be doing a reverse down a road like this wouldn't necessarily be a bad place to do it I'm not going to do a reverse today because it's just this is just a drive through but again I'm now moved into a more residential road I probably want to keep my speed down a little bit don't want to rush I'm looking under and over and around all these vehicles to see if I see any pedestrians waiting to walk across the road and this now brings me straight back up to a dual carriageway which is actually the one that I was just on and I've now got to re-merge with it now when you're re-merging onto a dual carriageway like this you've got to be careful obviously I'm turning left because I've got no choice I don't really need a signal because I'm merging onto a dual carriageway and I look right and I am incredibly lucky because all the vehicles there are stuck at the traffic light but if they weren't and they were coming I would have to be concerned with the middle lane the middle lane becomes a problem because the nose of my vehicle cannot physically stay just in the left but now I'm picking up my speed it is a 50 mile an hour speed limit so I want to get the car moving and I'm now doing about 50 miles an hour and I'm heading towards well, Hatfield here I guess and I'm actually on my way back to Hendon now and they may say take the next road on the left here which is near the bollards so I'm going to do that so I'm turning left making sure that I'm not interfering with anyone behind me and now again I'm coming down to a dual carriageway knowing that I'm entering a dual carriageway I'm going to be aware of vehicles that could be exiting the dual carriageway around that corner and I've now got to merge onto this dual carriageway and again I am really lucky because there's absolutely nobody there now at the traffic lights I'm going to be turning right which is an approximately 600 yards so I pick up my speed, there's absolutely nobody behind me, so mirror, mirror, signal. I'm going to change lanes into this middle lane. I'm going to cancel my signal and then mirror, mirror, signal and change lanes again. I've seen a few people on my videos recently, certainly the mock tests, changing two lanes at a time. And I always think it's a good idea to split that signal up for one lane to another to make sure that you don't make a silly mistake and try to do two lanes at a time. If I had left the signal on, and I pause for a second, I guess that would be okay. I've now cancelled my signal. I don't really need my signal on here, but I'm going to reapply it. Because I'm in a right filter lane. And then I'm turning right. Enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. And I'm now effectively just heading back to test centre. Depending on the traffic, it's possible they may get you to continue down the road and go round the back and enter Beaufort Park from the other side. But I'm just gonna enter back from here and I'm gonna take the second road on the right. I'm gonna call that the first, even though that's probably no entry. Put my mirrors on my signal and I'm gonna move into position just left of center. I'm now re-approaching the test center. I really don't wanna mess up this last junction and then turn enter the new road, new road, new mirrors. And again, you won't see a speed limit sign. There is no speed limit sign. So the continuation from the road there was 30. This is now 30. So I'm gonna drive accordingly. However, those speed bumps are pretty heavy. And then I would be turning left back into the test centre. I'm not going to do that because I probably won't be too happy that I'm doing that. But if you turn left into here, do be very careful of that curb. And then I'm just going to drive up and around here. On your driving test, you are going to be stopping the car a lot more frequently. You also have to do a reversing maneuver and possibly an emergency stop. So the amount of time it's taken me to complete that route, it would take a little bit longer for me to have done that as a proper test. But that just gives you an idea of some of the sort of features that you may have to deal with if you're taking your test at Hendon. It does not feature the apex corner on this particular test route. That's something that you're interested in then follow the link to this video up here and that will give you a tutorial in the Apex Corner. Plus there's quite a lot of content on my channel on the Apex Corner. So if that's something that you want to learn about, do go and have a look at that. Oh, if you want to do a mock test on my channel, then follow me on Instagram, send me a DM and we'll talk about it. I hope that you've got some value out of this video. If you have, obviously hit that like button, subscribe if you like more content and I will see you in the next one. Get well out.